Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. In the name of making America great again, Donald Trump threatens to make America a has-been. In fact, Trump threatens to shove our nation, nation into the sort of sorry second-rate status of the so-called superstars that Trump delivered for his nominating convention. Remember them? Antonio Sabato and Scott Bayo. How can Donald Trump make the USA the Sabato and Bayo of, Bayo of global politics? Donald Trump wants to build walls. He wants to put up trade barriers. And he wants to bow and scrape to Vladimir Putin. He wants to solidify Russia's nasty little dictator as the world's new top dog, the new role model that other leaders should follow. Why will the Trump approach make us shabby overnight? From roughly 1300 AD to 1600 AD, the Turkish Empire was the mightiest outside of China. The Turkish Empire was so powerful that Europeans lived in fear of extermination. That fear had a special name. It was called the Turkenfurcht, the terror of the Turks. I have a new book coming out December 13th, The Muhammad Code, How a Desert Prophet Gave You ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Boko Haram, or How Muhammad Invented Jihad. The Muhammad Code explains that one Christian European poet was so certain the Turks were about to annihilate Western Christendom and take over all of Europe from Hungary to England that he said Christian Europeans should pack their bags and move themselves and their nations to the New World, North America and South America. Their only hope of survival, said the poet, was to perform and their own ethnic cleansing. Then a strange thing happened. Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas, and Europe began to look outside of itself. Europe pioneered new sea routes to China and India. Europe invented the joint stock company. Europe came up with radical transport innovations, new kinds of cargo ships. Europe opened its horizons. It looked outside of itself, and guess what happened? It grew rich. Meanwhile, the wealth of the Turks had come from monopolizing the land routes to India and China. Those land routes were 1,700 years old. They were first pioneered in the days of the Roman Empire, when Roman senators' wives, the wealthiest women in the Roman Empire, showed off and made their competitors wild with envy by wearing, guess what? Tunics of Chinese silk. The Turks had a total chokehold on that old transportation corridor. But when the Europeans developed sea routes to China and India, the Europeans broke the Turkish monopoly. And when those 1,700-year-old Silk Road land routes grew old-fashioned and vastly overpriced, the Turkish Empire's wealth shriveled. The Turkish Empire's problems were economic and technological. The Turks' solutions would have been to compete with the sea routes to the east by improving the Silk Road. The Turks' solution would have been to make the old Silk Road the route of the future. And the Turks' solution would have been to develop new goods and services that the citizens of other nations would find irresistible. Export goods and services. But that's not what the Turks did when their empire was crumbling. Instead, Turkish authorities were sure that they could recapture former glories by returning to the traditions of the past. They put up barriers. They locked out foreign influences. They went back to the ways of their glory days. They flirted with the printing press, then they shut it down and expelled it. Europeans had stolen a Turkish invention for preventing plague, vaccination, and the Europeans had improved on it. The Turks turned their backs on the new improvements. Why? Because the foreign techniques departed from the customs that had once made Turkey great. 
the Turks sought their comfort in clinging to tradition. When plague did break out in Turkish lands, the Turks blamed it on the foreign innovations that they had failed to eradicate. To stop the ravaging of illness in 1580, Turkish officials destroyed, of all things, an astronomical observatory. The newfangled Western-style installation, they were sure, had offended Allah and brought the curse of disease. What's the point? Building barriers and turning inward will not bring greatness. It will make us a second-rate power. It will jack up the prices at Walmart by 35% and make the American way of life unaffordable. Why? The American way of life is based on Chinese goods. Inexpensive Chinese goods. Take away our Chinese-made smartphones and our Taiwanese laptops, and we go back to the 1970s a time when our only form of communication was a landline phone with a cord attached to the wall and when our only equivalent to a two-minute Google search was an afternoon-long trip to the local library. What's more, buying Chinese goods does not simply send money to China. Not at all. An infrastructure of Chinese gadgets makes innovative American companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, and Twitter possible. Take away our inexpensive electronics and you threaten America's most advanced and most rapidly expanding industries. That may be why Silicon Valley is afraid of Donald Trump. Meanwhile, the Chinese know all of this. They are opening to the rest of the world the way that Europe opened to the world after 1500. The Chinese are building the most audacious, and technologically advanced transport system in world history. They call it the New Silk Road. They are building a multi-continental, high-speed rail system of the sort that conservatives in this country have prevented us from building for the last 30 years. The Chinese are upgrading ports like Greece's Piraeus, the port of ancient Athens, to load and unload cargo ships of a size few of our ports are equipped to handle. The Chinese are building a next generation transport system that will take goods all the way from China to Spain in a mere two days. A transport system that will pull Eastern Asia, Central Asia, the Middle East, and Europe into one massive market. One vast ocean of common interest. A market for Chinese goods. To smooth that path of transit, China has signed free trade deals with eight of the 11 members of the Western TPP, the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement. China has linked those countries into its own free trade zone, a zone that does not include, guess who? Us, the USA. The countries in the new Chinese free trade zone cross the Pacific from Asia to the Americas. They include Australia, Chile, New Zealand, Singapore, Peru, Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, and now South Korea. China sees the wealth and glory of opening to the world and dominating it. Donald Trump wants to stop our natural role, competing with the Chinese to own the future. It is time for us to get back in the game. It is time for us to realize that the Russians are playing our politics like a puppeteer pulling strings. The Russians have rigged our presidential elections, election with their WikiLeaks. Now I believe that they are rigging our further destruction by encouraging our protesters in the streets. As long as the Russians can keep us in turmoil, they can make us what the Turks were back in the 1800s, the sick men of a new age an age in which the American president flies to Moscow, bows at Vladimir Putin's feet, and acknowledges the great Putin as the leader of the next generation. An age when the Chinese lead in establishing something George H.W. Bush, that's George Bush the Elder, promoted a new world order. 
Yes, for years, the Chinese have overtly promoted a new world order. And it's an order in which we are the Antonio Sabatos and Scott Bayos. It's an order in which we are Donald Trump's has-beens. Here's the bottom line. Our competition with the Chinese and the Russians is not just for the future of trade. And it is not just for the future of the role model that sets the standard for political leadership. It is for the future of hope. It is for the future of uplift and empowerment. It is for the future of humanity. America must compete. And America must compete for global leadership. That is the only way that America can be great. This is Howard the Humongous, speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make, no matter who is president. Or, want to know why? <laughs> Ask how. And now for the sleazy, slimy, sneaky, seditious, impossible to find, little off button.